Welcome back. While the Bay Area never wants for great festivals, this autumn will kick off a new one. The first Bay Area Science Festival opening October 29th. Uncovering your inner scientist while covering the cosmos to cancer? Presentations will blanket the Bay Area, including your local libraries, and close with a big finale at AT&T Park. Here with details, we welcome the festival coordinator, Kishore Hari. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Oh, uh, it's beyond exciting. Wow. And now, you said this is that's the first time in the Bay Area. I'm surprised we haven't even addressed this sooner, really. I'm surprised, too. But uh, science festivals are sort of new on the scene in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually were born in Europe and in Asia, and they've become really popular there. And it's just an emerging movement here in the, in the nation. So uh, it's okay. about time, though. So it started, you said, I think you told me it was 2007? 2007, 2007 in or so. like? In, in Boston and in D.C. and in Philadelphia now. Okay. Uh, pretty much now every major urban center across right. the country has them. So this is where we have pictures from those actual festivals? Yes. That have taken place. Okay, mm -hmm. I assume they're successful because San Francisco said let's us do that too. So, here's the question. You got a big scope. I, I went to your website and looked. Uh, mm -hmm. My gosh, there's everything from these moonlight walks, mm -hmm. kind of the hikes, mm -hmm. uh, to look at the cosmos and to talk about why somebody becomes an addict. Wow. Um, this is targeted at, a lot of t people would take a look at these pictures even now and say, well, this is for me to take my kids, mm -hmm. but it's also for adults? Absolutely. So we have a lot of programs geared towards youth, uh, but in addition, we're really focused on a young adult brand mm -hmm. because they, uh, typically in that 21 to 39 region, they don't have great interest or, or engagement with science. We're trying to beef up what they see and uh, what they participate in. Okay. Participate being the key word. We have the Discovery Museum. We have, you know, we have museums around that are devoted to some of these kinds of things. Mu the planetarium, museums, things like that. What's this going to offer that's different? Me I mean, museums are, are wonderful, but with a festival, it's going to have the celebratory atmosphere. It's taking it into neighborhoods and communities. Mm -hmm. So we're really bringing science to your doorstep, where you live, and making it relevant to what you're interested in. Okay, you said it's it's going to be in the libraries. Even all the are all Bay Area libraries going to have something going on? So two different counties have an initiative where they encourage everyone to read the same book. They're called One City One Book Initiatives, and both San Francisco and San Mateo counties have this initiative where they're encouraging everyone to read the same science book. It's called Packing for Mars by Mary Roach, uh -huh. who's a local author, all about what it takes to get to Mars. And so throughout those library systems, there'll be hands-on activities uh, related to astronomy and themes of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful chance w if you live in those areas to, to not only experience science, but actually read it too. Okay. Uh, they're going to talk about how close are we to a cure for cancer. Um, they're going to do these, these moonlight walks kind of, I guess, to what? Observe the stars? Well, it's a Bay Area star party. So about 15 different sites across the Bay Area from parks to some of the major observatories will be hosting uh, a star party where there'll be telescopes set out in front with astronomers manning it and it's completely free and available so if you've never looked at the night sky because it's always fogged over here mm -hmm. here's your chance you can go and they'll give you a guided tour of the universe right I on spot. took an astronomy course in science I was terrible at it but I do remember the night they mandated that we had to go to the top of a science building <laughs> and uh, look at the moon they had a telescope and I I think I some expletive came out of my mouth. I was so stunned. <laughs> but it was like the moon was right there. I mean, it was one of the most exciting things, and I remember it like it happened yesterday, and it was many years ago. So that kind of stuff is, is really... It, at the end of the day, what this is all about is it's making it fun. It's reinvigorating our interest and pride. Mm -hmm. And I want to emphasize pride because we are the leader of this country in terms of science and technology discoveries. Yeah. You remember that periodic table of the elements from yes, back in chemistry? Yes. Almost 10% of those elements were discovered by Bay Area researchers. No kidding. Uh, Didn't know that. the birth of the microprocessor. About half of the new sort of drug discoveries in the world are happening here in uh -huh. California. We have the highest concentration of Nobel laureates in the world. And we, so we have a lot to take pride in. Uh, but beyond that, we want to make this fun because this is where... Uh, this is the future. When we talk about all these people talk about job creation, yeah. these are the stable jobs of the future. Will there be a lot of green things addressed in terms of not only Absolutely. job creation, but just in terms of things that we can be doing now, other than beyond recycling and all of that that we already know? Absolutely. The next generation biofuels are being researched in the East Bay. Uh, solar technology, all of the energy generation uh, uh, green technologies that are emerging 
a lot of those companies are, are all based in the East Bay and mm -hmm. in and around the, the Bay Area. So you'll be able to meet all of these scientists and engineers at and, the forefront of this work. And possibly find out about a career you might be thinking about or Absolutely. find out about something you hadn't known. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the whole point is uh, to have all these engaging activities so you can walk up and shake the hand of a scientist or engineer. Okay, you started a science cafe. It was sort of a setting for social dialogues fueled by scientific research. Uh, that might sound dry, except I'm thinking, uh, no, it was probably wet because it's a cafe and there was uh, alcohol or not? Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> so this uh, festival, uh, no teetotaler here, um, you're going to have a science pub crawl? Absolutely. We're this doing, sounds fascinating. What does this involve? We're doing a takeover of a number of venues in the Mission District with different mini science activities that are short and, and fun and engaging. So we'll have readings at bookstores, we'll have hands-on activities at, at some of the, the retail shops, we'll have uh, some telescopes set up, there'll even be some uh, some science behind ice cream and, and really? taste and food and alcohol. It's really, uh, it's basically building out uh, an outdoor museum for for the adult crowd. With the, I was going to say, well, since you're, you're expanding to the adults, um, mm -hmm. a lot of us adults maybe were not science stars in school. Mm -hmm. So how often do you see, with your interaction with science all the time, how often do you see adults falling in love with science later in life? Well, looking back to how I ended up a scientist, it was my dad's own enthusiasm for science that had the most impact on my life. Mm -hmm. and if but that we, sparked you when you were a kid. Oh, absolutely. And you were good in science in school. I was okay. Oh. I'm still only okay at science. Really? I have to I have to admit I'm definitely not the the quintessential best scientist in the in the world by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm interested in it. And at the end of the day, science is sort of just a way of thinking with all of some of the global challenges that are out in front of us, climate change, uh, needing to vaccinate our children, so energy problems. Uh, we need people to be engaged in science to make the right decisions to move forward. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they have to become a scientist, but just to have some enthusiasm and engagement and interest in it will have a huge impact on the on the uh, region going forward. Okay, starts October 29th, goes through November, first week of November. It ends on November 6th with a free outdoor, mu uh, free day at AT&T Park. Free day, this is the big finale at AT&T. This AT &T. is big this finale. Is a big deal here. Uh, what yeah, do you want, what are you gonna do with follow-up. I mean, it sounds great, but then after that comes the next day in November and it's closed. Now what? So every university, research lab, museum, after-school program, they're all coming together to participate in the festival. And really what their mission to do is not only engage people on site, but to provide them with what are the ongoing opportunities within our groups, what is going on throughout the year, so that the festival is just an ignition point. It's okay, not and the I assume the website end. will remain, but for more information about the upcoming Bay Area Science Festival, uh, you can look at, let's see, throughout, I'm sorry, it's